Hope your weekend's wrapping up nicely. Welcome to the newscast. I'm Daniel Che. For the first time in 15 years, a North Korean foreign minister attended the ongoing United Nations General Assembly in New York. Ri Su-yong gave a highly anticipated speech at the meeting on Saturday. Our Kim Hyun-bin tells us what he had to say. North Korean Foreign Minister Yi Su Yong used his speech to the UN General Assembly on Saturday to shift the blame away from his regime and onto the United States for the issues that has it at odds with the international community. Over North Korea's nuclear program, he said his regime would disarm only once the U.S. changes its policy toward the North. The nuclear issue can be resolved only if and when the threat to our sovereignty and our right to life is removed, which requires the United States to end its hostile policy toward the DPRK. Over the North's abysmal human rights record, Lee said the regime is willing to talk. He said the North expressed a desire to take part last week in an unprecedented high-level meeting on the issue, which was hosted by the U.S., but the U.S. rejected the request. The DPRK is willing to engage in dialogue on the human rights issue. We are willing to cooperate, but it has to be on equal footing with other countries that are not hostile to us. During a 20-minute meeting with UN Secretary General Ban Ki-moon on the sidelines, he handed over a handwritten letter from North Korean leader Kim Jong-un. The United Nations did not give out any details about what was said. But after receiving it, Ban asked the North for permission and support and having U.N. organizations help out the North Korean people. Kim Hyun-bin, Arirai News. The foreign minister of China also addressed the U.N. General Assembly on Saturday, using part of his speech to touch on the long-stalled six-party talks aimed at disarming North Korea's nuclear program. Wang Yi said the dialogue needed to start up again as soon as possible, calling it the only viable means to resolving the issue. The foreign minister also urged relevant parties to exercise restraint, refrain from provocations, and work towards easing tensions on the peninsula. The six-party talks, which consist of the U.S., Japan, China, Russia, and the two Koreas, have not taken place since the year 2008. Both Seoul and Washington insist that Pyongyang demonstrate its commitment to denuclearization before the talks can resume. A new report out of the United States calls on Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe to correct his perception of history and make amends with former victims of Japanese colonialism. The U.S. Congressional Research Service in the report criticized the Abe administration's recent review of the 1993 Kono Statement, a landmark apology to the women forced into sexual slavery by the Japanese military during World War II. The report said such acts deteriorate Japan's already strained ties with China and Korea and ultimately hurt U.S. relations with East Asian nations. A growing number of Japanese citizens appeared to be of a similar mindset. In a recent survey conducted on some 3,000 Japanese students, 64 percent said their government needed to apologize and compensate the victims. The U.S.-led coalition against Islamic State militants carried out more airstrikes in Syria on Saturday, hitting key targets in the town of Kobani and in the country's east. Turkish Doga News Agency reports that Kurdish forces retook some positions they lost to the Islamic militants a few days ago, thanks to the air support. Other coalition airstrikes fortified by the latest additions of Britain, Belgium and Denmark targeted IS compounds in the central province of Homs and the northern regions of Raqqa and Aleppo. The Syrian Observatory for Human Rights said they had no reports of any civilian casualties in Saturday strikes so far. Pro-democracy activists are making good on their promise to paralyze Hong Kong's financial district through its sit-ins and civil disobedience. Thousands of protesters associated with the Occupy Central movement continued with mass demonstrations on Sunday at government buildings. They follow a week of student-led boycotts and protests which are demanding fully democratic elections for Hong Kong in 2017. The city's chief executive on Sunday held a press conference where he promised consultations on electoral reform. While intended to be peaceful rallies, there have been reports of minor clashes and arrests, while authorities have confirmed that they have in some cases used pepper spray on protesters. Since Korea is an aging society, it stands to reason that the number of dementia patients in the country would be on the rise. 
But a new report shows that the number of people with the disease is growing at an accelerating rate, which has experts and medical professionals sounding the alarm. Our Kim ji yeon has this report. One out of every 10 Koreans who are in their 70s or older have dementia. As of last year, the Health Insurance Review and Assessment Service says more than 400,000 people were suffering from dementia-related mental diseases, which is nearly twice the figure from four years earlier. The main symptoms of dementia can include memory loss, sudden mood swings, and a deterioration of one's sense of smell. Reducing the effects, doctors say, requires early action. Patients get better easily with medication and supervision when treated in the initial stages of the disease. But this is not the case for those in the final stages. In order to prevent dementia, experts recommend a healthy lifestyle that includes reading and learning new activities to stimulate the brain. At least 30 minutes of regular exercise a day, at least three times a week, can also help. Experts are also calling on the government to institute preventative measures, as dementia stands to take a financial toll on the country. Medical expenses for treating dementia in Korea reached 533 million U.S. dollars in 2013, double the total from just four years earlier. To provide support, the government has been increasing the number of dementia care centers throughout the country and has adjusted the basic pension plan. More than 4 million people who are over the age of 65 and in the bottom 70 percent income bracket began receiving pension payments of up to $90 last month. Kim ji Arirang News. The Korean government says it's keeping a close watch on the falling value of the Japanese yen against the Korean won. The current exchange rate of 951, or roughly 91 cents to 100 yen, is the lowest it's been since 2008. The government has said it isn't overly concerned with the currency rate, but Korean exporters are especially over losing price competitiveness in global trade. Some have called for more aggressive monetary policies to rival those seen in Japan. The Bank of Korea kept its interest rate unchanged at 2.25 percent this month after lowering it by 25 basis points back in August. For decades, the rest of the world tried everything to dethrone the reigning South Korean archers from changing the rules and imit imitating Korea's training methods to hiring former Korean national coaches. Through it all, Korea has remained on top. At the Asian Games in Incheon this Sunday, Korea trashed China 6-zip in the women's team recurve finals. Chong ta mi of that same team went on to clinch individual recurve archery gold after beating her compatriot Chang Hye-jin 7-1. Olympic champ Oh Jin Hyuk did the men's side proud by beating China's Yong Ji Wei 6 4 in the individual recurve archery finals. Another goal came from cyclist Chang Kyung Woo for the men's road race, while Pak Yeol became the third straight South Korean Asiat individual golf champ. And before that, another goal was hauled in at the women's trials bowling event, Korea's second goal from that sport. And now here are the latest in the medal standings. <laughs> Autumn in Korea provides much-needed relief from the sweltering summer heat, although only for a while right before the nation's notoriously bitter winters. As such, people flock outdoors to refresh their minds and souls. Little do they know, they are also getting some added physical benefits, as our Kim Min-ji reports. Without a cloud in the sky, people are taking advantage of the sun and cool autumn breeze. Although it's still a little hot during the day, the weather is just right to go cycling with my friends at around 4 in the afternoon. It's nice to get some sunlight. It makes me feel good. It also helps me sleep. The height of the sun in early autumn is lower than it is during summer, making ultraviolet rays weaker. And with low humidity levels, the weather conditions make it perfect for outdoor activities. Not only does the sun refresh your mind, it also makes your skin stronger and boosts your immune system. The vitamin D from sunlight in early autumn also helps the body better absorb calcium to make your bones stronger. In the northern hemisphere, the sun releases rays that can produce vitamin D from late spring to early autumn. 
Experts say just 30 minutes in the sun from between 10 in the morning and 2 in the afternoon will give you all the vitamin D you need. And with sunny spells forecast for the weekend, they advise people to get out and enjoy the sun. Kim Min-ji, Arirang News. Well, the sun sets, sun sets much sooner during the autumn days, and this day, I guess Koreans, Seoul lights especially, didn't get a lot of chances to soak in vitamin D outdoors because it's an overcast Sunday evening here. But rain-free enough to allow those plan outdoor activities still. On Monday, expect nationwide showers with some areas seeing up to 20 millimeters of rain. And now, here are the weather conditions in other parts of our world. Well, we've run out of time. It's the end of our newscast for this hour. We'll have more at 10 p.m. Korea time, so do join us then. Thank you for staying with us.